Hi folks, it's Andy and welcome to today's uh, Kendo rant. <laughs> um, thank you for everybody that watched yesterday and uh, for some of the questions that we got. Um, the series is going really well. Uh, I'm really, really happy with how it's going actually. We're getting loads of uh, great comments, great feedback, uh, which is good. Um, so thank you very much for that again. Uh, I think I say it in every video, <laughs> but I, uh, I really am grateful for, uh, for the support that, uh, that everybody gives us. Um, not just in these videos, to be honest, uh, in these, obviously these newer Kendo rant videos, uh, but in the Kendo show in general. Uh, and of course with, uh, with Kendo star, um, Kendo star, as I've said, um, loads of times, uh, it, it supports what we do. Um, it's, it's, it's our everything, you know what I mean? We're not a, it's not a side business of mine. Kendo Star is a, is a full-time um, <laughs> uh, international business um, that's, that's an awful lot of work, <laughs> uh, which is thanks to you guys because it's, it's been so busy, thanks to all the, the orders that we get from, from around the world um, every single day. Uh, that's, what, that's what keeps us going. Um, so yeah, once again, uh, thank you for that. Uh, I don't think I say that enough, uh, but I really am grateful for the support that everyone gives me, uh, both in the videos uh, and on Kendo Star. Uh, so that's kendostar.com, by the way, uh, if, you, if you're watching this for the first time. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it's what supports these videos. Uh, so um, I got a couple of good questions yesterday um, for me to talk about. Uh, and I'm going to talk about both of them because uh, I think they're both great questions. Um, the first one is about the tare. Uh, it says, um, what's... Uh, What's the good characteristics of a good tare? Um, unlike other parts of one's borgu, the tare is not a target, so shock absorption may not be the number one priority, but aesthetically, quite a bit of it is covered by the door and the zekken. Um, so what justifies the price range? What can we look at to determine whether a tare is worth every uh, tuppence, uh, the money I guess that means, uh, or an absolute ripoff? Uh, well, I've um, <laughs> I brought a few to show you. Um, the tare, okay. The tare, yeah, uh, you're dead right. Uh, it, it is pretty much the only part of the bulgur that we don't hit on purpose, but it does play a, a major role in um, in protecting you. I imagine Kendall would be extremely painful if you were to try it without the tare, um, because it does protect you from those sort of missed blows, especially when people try for do or gyakudo. Uh, it is definitely important. Uh, now, uh, I brought a few different ones. There's a few things that de determine the price. Uh, this is this is probably my most expensive one that I use personally. This is from our Kaisei Borgu set. Um, it, it's got my Zekian on it still, but. Uh, this is, there's a few things that are sort of, uh, it's a bit dark, I guess, but this one is a fully deer skin reinforced. Yeah, so you see all these, this part here, all this is deer skin. Uh, whereas on a, another tiny, uh, like this one, like this one, you see how it's cloth? This is orizashi. Yeah, so that's one thing that affects the price first off because deer skin is much more expensive than orizashi. Uh, it's a little bit more prestigious, it looks a little bit nicer and it's a little bit more durable as well. So that's one thing. Uh, secondly, this one, uh, this particular set, it's, it's uh, stitched with a kind of um, cross pitch style stitching. So it's stitched both vertically and horizontally. Uh, again, that adds durability. All of the leather parts as well, this hedikawa, this edging leather here, this is all deer skin as well, that boosts the durability as well. Um, so that's another thing that sort of contributes to the cost of it. Um, but it is important that you look for different aspects of the tare, depending on how you're gonna use it. For example, if I bring up this one again, this is my Isamu tare. The Isamu Bogu on our website, it's a Jisengata style. So it's for tournament use. Uh, so I wouldn't use this for sort of heavy training. Um, that's why I just use the, it's, it's got the orizashi fabric on here because it keeps it nice and light, quick drying. Also, it doesn't have a heady color, okay? It has a uh, fukuro ni around the edges, yeah? So it makes it super, super thin and super lightweight. It's so light, this tare, you can hardly feel it. Um, but it, it isn't as protective because it is thin, yeah? Because I don't expect to get hit as much in a, in a shiai, in a tournament, especially not on the door. Um, so I don't need to, worry too much about it. Um, again, this one's got the deer, the bit of leather parts that are on it are deer skin because that's how we make our Isamu. 
Um, but actually, this uh, Fukuro Nui style um, way of making the tare, uh, this actually costs a little bit more as well. That actually bumps the price up a little um, because it's a little bit harder to make when they're making it in the first place. Um, let me look at this one though. This is my, this is my main tare. This is the, the Borgo I wear more than all of the others. This is my Vanguard Prime. Uh, and as you can see, it's, been, it's worn quite a bit because, <laughs> uh, I mean, as you can imagine, I've got tons of burger. I think I've got like six sets of burger, um, probably more. Uh, but I just, I wear this one all the time because I love it so, so much. Uh, it's so comfortable, it's so protective, it's light, and I think it looks great as well. Um, so this one, for example, again, this one's got the Orizash fabric on it, but it's nice, plain, simple design. And with the with the Vanguard Prime again, the leather parts are all deer skin, so that bumps the price up a little bit. And we've got this guard stitch that we call it the way 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 we stitch it here. So you've got the the four rows of close stitching for durability, and then a really wide gap which gives a massive cushion. So you can see, I don't know if you can see on the iPhone, but it, it's got a, it's got a massive load of padding here. So I, I'm really safe and protective protected around my abdomen, uh, you know, when I've got the door on, even if someone misses a door strike, I don't have to worry about it because this, this thing really, really protects me. Uh, and it's so comfortable as well because those, uh, those closer rows, they sort of articulate, they sort of articulate the tally as well. Um, so it's, it's definitely an awesome burger set, the, uh, the Vanguard Prime. Like if, um, you know, if you're in the market for a new burger set right now, it's definitely the, uh, the, the best one to go for if you're if you're you're right to spend a little bit more money um, and have something that's made to order so you don't need it quickly. Um, it, it, it's I just absolutely love it. Um, I mean the Vanguard series in general is uh, is absolutely awesome. Um, so yeah, check that out. But um, that's another aspect of the tare um, from from that set. So that's that's three tally there that are all totally different. You know, you've got one that's a little bit more prestige, looks very nice. I'll probably use that in my next grading. Um, I've got one that I use for Shi, uh, and I've got my, my main workhorse uh, tally here, and they've all got different sort of elements to them. Um, if we're talking about the sort of cost of the tally, um, obviously you can pay loads for a tally, especially a hand stitch tally. Hand stitch tally. They cost loads, okay, because what's expensive is particularly about a hand-stitched uh, burger is the um, uh, the futon, okay, because that's what's stitched by hand. Um, so, you know, you, you can expect to pay a lot for a tare. When I say it costs loads, I mean, that's that's comparatively um, to the other aspect, you know, for, to say like a, a machine-stitched one or even in comparison to the other... Um, parts of the burger. You find that with a machine stitched burger, the tare sometimes um, doesn't cost uh, as much as the kote, or the kote is a, kind of comes in at a similar cost, but with a hand stitched one, you would be expecting to pay quite a lot more for the tare, uh, because it's just it's just a massive piece of futon that's all been hand stitched. Okay, so the thing about hand stitched burger these days, it's more of a, it's more of a prestigious thing than it is of a, a practical thing, um, certainly more so than it was uh, in days gone by. Uh, so that's, that's definitely something worth considering. Um, if we talk about on the lower end though, um, it, it, what's the difference between like the cheapest tare out there on the market? Now, I was looking around the place to try and find a really cheap and, cheap and nasty rubbish tare, but we don't have any here because we don't sell that sort of uh, junk. So uh, the, cheapest thing I, the cheapest thing we have is the Hibiki, um, which is, I mean, it's a great tare. It's, you know, it's five millimeter. It looks like it's reinforced with deer skin, but it's actually synthetic. Uh, but it still looks great, um, and it's you know it's a great all-round, all-purpose uh, tare as with the rest of the bulgu. Now, if the hibiki does come in a little bit more uh, in terms of cost than some of the other sets that are out there. I know there's other companies like throwing out set bulgu sets are like three hundred, three hundred dollars or something like that. Um, and you know what the the problem with that is, um, yeah, I mean especially something like the tare. It's what's inside it. There's bits you can't see. Is where they've cut the corners, where they've scrimped and saved. Um, if I can describe, like, a, if you know what I mean by like carpet underlay, you know, like um, when you put carpet down in somewhere. Uh, it depends where you're living. Um, li like, live, I lived in Japan for so long. Like, they don't install carpet in the house. 
But if, <laughs> if you install carpet in your house, there's like a, a piece of uh, stuff that goes underneath the carpet. So it's not straight against the floorboards called carpet underlay. And you can get this really cheap rubbish um, one for that. Um, that's like made of recycled stuff and it's, it's a real ugly mess. Uh, yeah, well, that's, that's what you'll find inside the really cheap and nasty bog sets. So, uh, so keep an eye out for that. If you know, if you, if you are looking to get something on the cheap, um, if it's too cheap, then that's, that's also something worth, worth considering. Um, but yeah, uh, I mean, at the end of the day, it's, it's difficult to say on the tad because, you know, it, it, it doesn't appear to be a super functional, uh, aspect of the burger, but it is quite important, like I said, um, because you know you, you'd be. Um, I don't think you'd like. I don't think you'd like to practice kendo without it. Uh, <laughs> so when choosing one, I think what you just got to consider is what what do you want it for? Do you want it for do you want it for tournaments? Then you want something that's going to be lightweight. Uh, it doesn't have to be protective as much because you want it to be comfortable. It's not something that's going to be on your mind. If you want it for hard practice, if you want it to be there as motodachi, then yeah, something like the Vanguard series, Vanguard Prime, that sort of thing, like I'm wearing. Um, my wife actually uses the, the standard Vanguard model because again, uh, it's, it, she doesn't practice as much as I do um, and she doesn't act as motodachi as much as I do, um, but she still wants something and obviously I wanted to be wearing something that's comfortable and protective. Um, if you want something that's really classy, really high grade, something that makes, makes you look really, uh, really smart, then, you know, then that's when you look at the sort of higher grade ones that have got the full deer skin reinforcements. Um, even the hand stitch stuff again it's more of a prestige thing now than anything else so um, having said that you know like uh, the the Kaise for example that's something that if somebody wanted uh, a, a good all round you know a, a prestige all round burger set that's really going to last a very long time um, that's the sort of thing um, that you'd be looking at I think, uh, so that's it, I think. That's pretty much all I've got to say on Taddy, uh, really, just off the top of my head. Um, <laughs> I hope it sort of makes some, made some sense. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go on to the next question now. This might be a bit of a long video because I've already reeled off on Taddy for ages. Um, but the, this is a great question because um, this is about getting people into Kendall. The question says, short of having Kendall in the Olympics, what can be done to get Kendall into the popular consciousness? find that especially in places with a lower pop population and relatively low Asian demographics, uh, mainstream martial arts such as karate, jiu-jitsu uh, jiu and MMA are easy, easy propositions for the general public, but kendo recruitment is still incredibly difficult, seeing as one, people don't know what kendo is, two, people don't know how to learn kendo, three, people don't know how to find dojos and clubs, and four, people don't know uh, that there is a dojo and club nearby. Long story short, what, what would it take for Kendo to capture the popular imagination? A movie or TV show, uh, i.e. the Kendo Kid, uh, having it on TV, uh, I'd find it hard to believe that schools would take it as a PE, P, P, uh, P as in physical education, elective. Um, Amazing, fantastic question, and there's already some responses to that. Uh, just as a note, this is these are questions that were posted on the uh, the Kendo Show Early Access group. Uh, there's a link in the description, uh, so you can join that group as well. It's totally free, of course. Um, okay, uh, I think it's a great question. And first off, I'm gonna um, just moving stuff out of the way uh, so I don't step on it as I'm sort of moving around. Right. Um, first off, short of having it in the Olympics, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if getting kendo in the Olympics would automatically increase participation. Uh, I think there's loads of sports that are probably less popular worldwide uh, than kendo is. Uh, I think I heard somewhere there's like five or six million people doing kendo um, all around the world. Uh, I can't verify that, don't know if it's definitely true, but um, I'm pretty sure there's some sports in the Olympics uh, or in the Winter Olympics that are probably less practiced than kendo is. Uh, so I'm not sure that kendo is definitely uh, going to get more popular just by throwing it in the Olympics, but it, it's kind of a moot point anyway, because it, like I said, in the video about the Olympics, I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, now, when I came back to the UK uh, at the end of last year and I started getting involved in my club uh, that I'm practicing here at, um, 
practicing that here, I mean, <laughs> in Manchester. This is some, something we got together and started talking about, about how to get more people involved. So um, I think the question is about how to get more people in Kendall, but it has to start at, at everybody's individual level, everybody's individual club level. And the real thing is that Kendo is a really alien thing to a lot of people. It's not like in Japan where most people know what Kendo is. Um, it appears in popular culture, it appears in television dramas, it appears in kids TV shows, cartoons, it appears in advertisements. Uh, that's not going to happen so much over here because kendo isn't something um, that's part of our, our culture. Having said that, it's just a case of getting it out there and known and I think that most people... Um, not most people, but I think a lot of people do take an interest in Kendall once they start to find out about it. And I think with it being in the media, um, things like movies, TV and stuff like that, if there is stuff like that that happens, I think that would help. But more importantly, I think we have to uh, a sort of responsibility on ourselves or in, in our own dojos, really. Our own dojos have to kind of grow it up from the bottom. Kendo's not a really... Um, it's not really a... a an art or a martial art that's been practiced for a very long time in lots of countries and uh, we've had it in the UK for quite a while but um, you know I know there's lots of other countries where it, it, it's only been sort of 10 years or less so um, you know we have to be patient as well <laughs> kendo is actually growing uh, around the world outside of Japan it's actually declining in Japan the practice of kendo in Japan is declining but around the world it's it's increasing um, I think things that clubs can do, individual clubs, uh, some people commented about doing demonstrations like uh, we did one with our club at uh, like a Japan Day or J Japan Expo or those sort of things. Or if there's any universities that have uh, J Japanese societies or Japan societies, those sort of things, um, that can be a great thing to, um, to sort of get demonstrations at. That's one thing, because again, it's just raising that public uh, profile. Another thing, and it's really simple, it's super simple, but I think a lot of it is overlooked by, uh, by many clubs, is I think uh, Facebook or social media, um, Facebook in particular, is such a huge entity in modern society and modern culture uh, that you really have to make sure that your dojo has um, a, a presence on Facebook. Now, what I do see a lot is that um, a lot of kendo clubs have like a group, like a, a Facebook group for their club. Now that's great, that's one thing, and it's good for communicating between members, but you're not gonna get new people in. I think what you'll find is, and this is something we found in, Man in, in Manchester where I'm practicing that, is um, setting up a Facebook page uh, did a lot to get new inquiries. Um, obviously having a website is one thing, but having a Facebook page also boosts your uh, search engine vis visibility, stuff like that. Um, and you'll, you'll find that people uh, get in touch with you through, through the Facebook page uh, because Facebook does things like suggests uh, pages to people and things like that. Um, so that's another thing. You have to make sure you've got an actual page. It's different to a group because uh, I think that's, that's a better way to reach, uh, reach the normies, as it were. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, stuff like that. You, need, you know, just have to make sure that your club's doing everything it possibly can. Um, to make sure it's it's got awareness stuff like has it got a poster up if you're hiring a if you're hiring a sports center um, if you've got a poster up in the sports center if other clubs have got posters up in there then make sure you you've got one up there for kendo as well so once they see somebody studying borgo studying armor people are going to take an interest in that um, it's like just the last last week when we had the summer seminar the british kendo association association summer seminar that was in this massive sports center at the university of surrey and there was always people from other parts of the sports centre, they were playing squash or badminton or whatever, coming and seeing what was going on and they were interested in, in kendo. I even had one of the staff members of the, of the sports centre come and ask me about it. Um, and I, I obviously referred them to the, uh, to the British Kendo Association in order to find a club near them. But, um, you know, anything we can do to increase that visibility is, is absolute uh, paramount. Um, obviously the other thing is that, you know, I mean, I, I've been passionate about getting people into Kendall and getting more people doing Kendall, uh, 
for a very long time. I mean, it's it's all it, it it's what I do. You know, that's what that's what why I do what I do really is is probably what I should say. Um, it's why the kendo show still exists. I nearly quit the kendo. I didn't ne didn't quit it. I nearly didn't start the kendo show. I should say. Um, you know, after after I finished working at the the last company I worked for in Japan, had a reasonably successful YouTube channel with kendo instructional videos on it, uh, and I and I, I nearly just didn't bother doing it again. But it was only through so many people contacting me and saying, "Oh, Andy, it's through finding your YouTube videos, I actually started Kendall." Um, you know, and that's that's been something that, uh, that that's really held with me. And that's why that's why I kind of put so much energy back into it. Um, you know, so uh, anything, anything you can do to keep keep it um, keep it in the public eye. Talk to your friends about it. Talk to your family about it. You know, never know who wants to who wants to start it. I, I don't think there's anything we can do. Well, I don't think there's much we can do. Um, certainly not as individuals, but even as clubs, potentially um, associations, the, the the association in your country or federations or whatever. They may have the potential to get it in the more widespread media. Um, but, uh, you know, the other thing you can do, actually, one's just sprang to mind now, <laughs> one just sprang to mind is if you're, if you're participating in tournaments or competitions, particularly if you're a member of a national team, um, any achievements that you have, anything like that, anything you can get in the local paper or the national paper or any, any media outlet like that, um, that's definitely something that you can, um, you know, uh, you can do to try and get it in the public eye. The idea is to get Kendall in front of the eyes of people that don't know what it is. Um, but other than that, it, it goes back to us just going to uh, the dojo level. Each of our dojos doing our very best um, to try and keep building up, getting people in uh, and, and interested in Kendall. Um, so yeah, like I say, Facebook page, uh, posters, uh, talking to people about it, anything you can get in the paper, anything you can make sure you've got a website for your club, you know what I mean, that, that's, that's uh, if possible, optimised for search engines. Um, it's not hard to put a website up there anymore, you know, there's loads of websites out there, you can put up a website uh, dead easily and it looks good. Um, so that's, that's, you know, th there's no excuse for that sort of thing these days, unfortunately. <laughs> so yeah, um, I'm pretty sure that's about it. Uh, last comment I will make on that though, sorry, about uh, I find it hard to believe that schools would take it as a PE, PE elective. Yeah, um, I, think, I think it's probably unlikely that uh, schools would take it as a PE elective, um, uh, physical education in schools. Uh, uh, there, I have heard of it happening uh, in, in different places around the world, so I'm not saying it doesn't happen. It certainly does. Um, but on the whole, in general, I think it could be a very difficult thing to do because what we're talking about is getting people dressed up in armour and hitting each other with sticks. And obviously, they would, probably wouldn't be doing that in PE. They'd be doing just sabuti or sort of, you know, that sort of thing. But I think once you start talking about sword fighting or hitting, you know, full contact stuff, um, you get into a little bit of dangerous territory uh, where where they might be unsure about whether they want to take it on or not. Um, but I don't know. Um, it definitely, if, if there's anyone out there that's, if there's anyone out there that's, that's uh, working in schools or uh, connected to schools, it's definitely something that, you, you know, you should try and set up if you can. I do, like I say, I've heard it happen. It just happened in some places, um, but it's not something that I know much about. Uh, so, yeah. So that's that's another point that I just wanted to quickly add there. Okay, um, so that's it. That's great. Uh, <laughs> I hope that sort of uh, covered covered the points. Um, it's been a bit of a longer video today because I've had both of those questions and I did want to get to them properly. Um, but thank you uh, again for watching and for uh, joining me in these uh, these rants. <laughs> um, I've, uh, like I said yesterday, I've started to put uh, wheels in motion to get uh, new episodes of the Kendo Show uh, produced and filmed. Uh, leave me a comment, uh, either what you'd like me to rant about next time, and also give me some ideas of what you'd like to see in future episodes of the Kendo Show. Um, I, I am going to be filming some new episodes very, very soon, uh, so now's the time to be coming at me with uh, with your suggestions of what you want to see uh, in, in future episodes. Um, other than that, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to shop at Kendo Star. Um, <laughs> um, it, is, uh, it is very important that you do that. Uh, it's a great, you know, obviously it does support
support the channel, does support these videos, uh, but it is it is fantastic gear. Um, you know, anybody, I mean, our, our reputation speaks for itself. I mean, I don't think I need to push that. All, all you have to do is look at any of the reviews and speak to anyone that's shopped with us. Uh, I, think, I think you'll hear of uh, pretty much positive experiences all around. I, I head up the customer service myself, so there's a very high uh, likelihood that if you email Kendo Star, it'll be actually myself getting back to you. Um, you know, and I, I'm checking everything. I'm making sure everything's going going swimmingly and everything's going perfect. So you can shop with uh, you can shop with uh, what's the word? You know, like uh, uh, satisfaction, and you can you can be carefree. You don't have to worry about um, problems. So um, with that being said, um, I look forward to seeing you in the next uh, next one of these. I'll try and get one up again tomorrow. Uh, again, leave me a comment. And let me know what you'd like to uh, like me to rant on. See you later.